Ever taken a photo and then immediately wondered how you can see something with your eyes and then a box with a piece of glass on the end of it can just magically freeze that exact moment in time? Well, it's not exactly magic, but it's pretty close. So imagine a ray of light just cruising along. It hits something, say, your smiling face. This light then bounces off and heads straight into a camera. But how does the camera grab this light and turn it into a photo? It'll make more sense if we first travel back in time. But don't worry, this video isn't going to be a history lesson. So there was this French inventor named Joseph. He's in his lab, tinkering away, and boom, he creates the world's first camera, or as he called it, a heliograph. Think less sleek gadget, more a metal box with a mini telescope attached. This was in 1816, by the way. Through the lens of this telescope-like setup, light would travel inside and hit a special pewter plate coated with light-sensitive chemicals. This process wasn't quick. We're talking about a photo session that lasted about 10 hours. Imagine standing still for that long. No blinking, no twitching, just you and your eternal patience. In fact, that's how long it took just to take this photo. Capturing light and transforming it into a visible image was no easy feat back then. Light interacts with the chemicals we talked about in a slow dance, gradually creating an imprint. The photograph. The daguerreotype came next, keeping the box design but tweaking the process. Instead of pewter, they used treated copper plates. The result? The time to capture an image dropped to just 15 minutes. Still a while, but hey, had a significant cut from 10 hours. Even then, stay still or you'll blur out of the family portrait. Fast forward to 1888 and celluloid film bursts onto the scene. Kodak jumps in, mass-producing film reeling cameras. Now we're talking just 1 25th of a second for a photo. Okay, history lesson over. Let's talk modern cameras. They've got lenses like super advanced eyes focusing light onto a sensor. In the past, it was film. Now it's all about digital sensors that convert light into digital signals. Cheaper, quicker, and no more creepy camera store guy judging your photos. These sensors are like expert sunbathers, except they're soaking up light and color, converting them into electrical signals. These signals then get transformed into the images you see. So the sensor is like the brain of the camera, but instead of thoughts, it processes light. These digital sensors are like mini mosaics, made up of millions of tiny tiles called pixels. Each pixel is like a light detective, capturing clues about the intensity and color of the light hitting it. When you click the picture, every single pixel on that sensor is working overtime, gathering data about the light. This data then gets stitched together to create the final image. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle, but instead of fitting pieces together, the camera's software is piecing together bits of light information. So when you click that shutter button, it's like opening a floodgate. Light pours in, hitting the sensor, and boom! The camera has what it needs to make a photo. It's a lightning-fast game of catching light. Shutter speed decides how long this light party lasts. Fast shutter speed is perfect for freezing action without any blur. Slow shutter speed? That's your ticket to those artsy motion blur and cool light trail photos. But how does the camera know what to focus on? Enter autofocus. This nifty feature is like the camera's own decision-making process. Using either contrast detection, which scans for the sharpest contrast in an image, or phase detection, which splits the image and then realigns it. Autofocus helps your camera lock on to the subject. It's like having an assistant who's constantly adjusting your glasses so that you can see clearly. For photos, the light captured by the sensor is then processed into an image file like JPEG or RAW. It's a light language being translated into computer language. And how do videos work? When you record a video, your camera isn't just taking one photo. It's taking a series of photos at a super fast pace. Typically, this is about 24 to 60 photos per second. These are called frames. When played back rapidly, these frames create the illusion of movement. It's like flipping through a flipbook. Each frame is a separate image. And when you run them all together, you get a moving picture or video, which is why fancy movie critics call movies motion pictures. Yeah, whatever. Video capture also involves controlling exposure and focus over time. This means the sensor has to work continuously, adjusting as the scene changes. Modern cameras can auto-adjust these settings on the fly, or even go to manual if you're feeling adventurous. So thank big ol' Joseph next time you snap a photo and subscribe to Tube as we're here to answer all of your high questions.